Dramatic images posted on social media show Iranian demonstrators rushing away from tear gas attacks near the country's parliament building in the capital city. On Monday, traders at Tehran's famous Grand Bazaar took to the streets angry about rising prices and a steep drop in Iran's currency. Protesters reportedly clashed with police as the country's economic crisis continues to worsen. Joining me to discuss the impact of these demonstrations is Dr. Mike Ansari of Mohaba TV. His group beams 24-hour Christian satellite programming into Iran. Dr. Ansari, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, so what do you make of these protests uh, in Tehran? Hi, George. The latest protests in Iran, uh, they're quite significant because it is the traders of the Iran's, of the Tehran's Grand Bazaar that have taken to the streets protesting the rising prices and the plummeting value of Iran's currency. The news of the United States abandoning the recent nuclear deal has created mass panic, this time among the traders in Tehran. Uh, and, um, you know, that by itself is quite significant since up until now, most of the recent anti-government protests were focused in provincial cities rather than Tehran. And you mentioned the significance of, uh, of, the, of the Grand Bazaar. I've been there. It is the nerve center of the city. Sure, you have all the sprawling uh, big malls around uh, the city of Tehran, but the Grand Bazaar is the epicenter of business uh, in the capital city. And so for the traders to take to the streets, as you say, is very significant, right? That's right. Remember that it was these group of traders that are extremely influential in Iranian politics in 1979. They were the ones who backed, um, economically backed uh, the uprising, the revolution against the Shah and brought Ayatollah Khomeini into power. Now, after about uh, 40 years, the same group are basically going into the street and saying we're not happy with the current economic situation. So uh, that is a big deal for Iranian government. Uh, Mike, uh, is it your sense that uh, this was a, a spontaneous, a spontaneous reaction to the ongoing economic challenges, or uh, do you have any indication that this was planned by some group? Well, there are quite a few powerful factions led by hardliners inside Iran, you know, who are critical of President Hassan Rouhani's leadership. They see him as a weak, as a as a moderate leader, and they don't like him. Uh, there are speculations that these hardliners may be behind some of the initial uh, protests uh, aiming to weaken his uh, government. So let me help, uh, help our viewers understand this. What are Iranians so uh, upset about? Uh, you know, similar demonstrations rocked the country late last year, uh, spreading to dozens of uh, cities and towns. What are they so upset about? Well, most Iranian families are facing grave economic hardship. The prices of milk, eggs, meat, bread has skyrocketed. Yet Iranian people are witnessing the government investing millions of dollars in expensive, uh, you know, regional disputes uh, in Iraq, Syria, Yemen to increase its regional influence while they're going hungry. So it's not sitting well with the Iranian uh, people. People are not happy with their leaders. That is why they have taken up to the streets. And what is very interesting, as I have uh, looked at social media on Twitter and so forth, uh, these demonstrations, you hear the demonstrators, uh, Mike, not shouting death to America, death to Israel. In this particular protest, they're saying death to Palestine. And they're saying enough of Syria. Obviously, the reference there to Iran's influence and, and, uh, and um, a position in Syria. That is very, very interesting to me. Did you find that uh, interesting as well? Absolutely, absolutely. Iranian people are very much aware that their leaders are very focused on continuing to invest Iranian riches uh, for advancing their cause uh, in disputed territories uh, in, in Palestine. They're, they're using the funding in in uh, Lebanon uh, for the Hezbollah that just recently uh, took control of the government. Uh, we're realizing that there's a lot of regional changes with um, uh, Mr. Erdogan becoming uh, the new president of Turkey. There's going to be a regional shift again in, in uh, you know, in posturing for power and influence in the region. So Iran technically cannot back off uh, from its, its posture. Um, therefore, it needs to continue to invest millions of dollars of its petroleum uh, dollars 
uh, that needs to go to its people, but it's being invested now for their own exportation of the Shiite Islam in the region. So Iranian people are absolutely dissatisfied, and they're saying, why would you want to spend uh, uh, and invest money in Palestine when your own people are going hungry? Mm. Uh, do you have any evidence that uh, uh, the protest this week uh, has any direct correlation to President Trump's recent decision to withdraw from the Iran nuclear uh, deal? Is there any correlation? Do you get a sense that this is putting more economic stress on a country that is already reeling economically? Absolutely. When you take a look at uh, online uh, posts, social media posts, uh, it is clear that the U.S. sanctions can uh, potentially have a crippling effect on the Iranian economy. We are already seeing a record low fall of Iranian currency against the U.S. dollar on the unofficial foreign exchange market. So the answer is yes. You run one of the most popular Christian satellite uh, channels producing Farsi language programs into Iran. Uh, I'm curious, how are Iranians, in the midst of all the economic challenges, how are they responding to your programs when you talk about the gospel of Jesus Christ and peace and how to find uh, peace in the midst of economic uh, turmoil? How are they responding to your programs, Mike? Well, George, there's something amazing going on. We have never seen anything like this happen before. There is uh, a natural and spontaneous gravitation of Iranian Muslims to Christianity. You see, Iranians are realizing that Iran has a rich Christian history that dates back all the way to the day of Pentecost. Yet, with the emergence of Islam, most Christian communities across the Middle East, including Iran, were marginalized and at times even totally destroyed. So we are getting over 800 contacts every day from Iranians who want us, uh, who want to know more about their Christian heritage. And what I find absolutely stunning is that Christianity is growing the fastest in Iran than in any other country today. Is that right? Correct. There has been an organic and natural emergence of Christian faith across Iran and the region. In fact, a record number of Iranians are becoming Christian. We get to listen to hundreds of Iranians every month who want to share with us their new path as new Christians. Um, you know, it seems they are realizing Christianity was not a European or a Caucasian faith. They are rediscovering their roots in Christianity and are asking if we could help them along. Okay, in the midst of the uh, economic and political turmoil in Iran, Mohabbat TV, under the leadership of Dr. Mike Ansari, is penetrating this Islamic nation uh, with the good news of Jesus Christ. Uh, Dr. Ansari, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you.